you want to rep your social media and get more friends? <laughs> Dan Pa from Pa Pa it- Game. <laughs> oh, these are so cute. Two little paws. Adorable. Two little paws. It'd be like Pa Pa. I have a distant relative whose name is Paul Pa from Pa Pa, West Virginia. Pa- oh, oh, no. Paul Pa from Pa Pa. My, my name is Paul Pa from Pa Pa, West Virginia. My family, they're very creative. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 89 of the Game Brew Podcast, the bi-weekly video game podcast where we sip delicious beers, discuss video games, and are now fully rendered in 4K. I am oh. your host, Ian Shulk Richard, <laughs> and I'm joined by Dan Dunben Pa. Oh hi, that's hi. me. <laughs> that's you. It's that's that's a, your that's name. Name. Traditionally there's oh, a response wow. there. <laughs> It's okay. It's only your second time. Uh, Whom we will, (laughs) whom, (laughs) whom we will hereto after refer to as Combaticus. Uh, I'm also joined today by Dan Rain Rots. That's that's me. I'm Dan. And Allison Sharla Van Devender. Are you telling me you don't know Xenoblade? Is that is that is that what I'm just hearing? Dan 2.0. Generally, it's and Dan. Wow, shame, shame. Yeah, generally. Main Mm. main Mm. episode. (laughs) Judging you all, but okay, continue. (laughs) It's it's hazing. That's a thing we do. Today on episode 89, we'll be responding to Joe Rogan's recent comments about video games in the Joe Rogan Experience, and we'll be talking about the best, softest textures in video games. But first, it's time for a beer. Dan, what are we Whoa. drinking this week? No, I thought... Oh, oh Chris isn't <laughs> here. Uh, so, okay, so today we are drinking um, uh, a, a wonderful stout by Bell's. Uh, it's called the Kalamazoo Stout. Uh, it's named after the city where it all started. I think it's the city where Bells was founded. Now it's in Comstock, Michigan, but I think in Kalamazoo is where they were originally. Yeah, it's one of their most classic recipes. It's smooth, full-bodied, uh, and offers a blend of aromas and flavors of dark chocolate and freshly roasted Sounds coffee. just like you, Balanced. Dan. This could be a label about oh. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well... Wait, which one? Uh, Me? Smooth, full bodied. Yeah. Um, Dan, no. 1.0. I mean, listen, I've been running. I've been trying to not <laughs> be full bodied anymore. Um, so let's everybody take a sip I, to see how it. Uh... I love, actually, you know what's funny is, is it is very smooth. Hmm. It's got a toast in the middle and then it finishes real smooth. And that yeah. that smooth finish is one reason one of the reasons I love stouts. People always talk about stouts like they're um like they're these really harsh things. And I just like drink it drink a stout now and then and you'll come to love them. It says brewed with brewer's licorice. What is that? I'm assuming it's probably licorice oh, for beer. There it is. There it is. Oh, okay, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> is that like, <laughs> Well, I mean it's, it's the that. same way that like you know, if you brew you like if you drink a milk stout, it doesn't have like milk in it you know it's like a it's like something else that's in there uh i know about beer see when chris is here you get like the b like the b team beer facts yeah uh guys uh, for someone who knows nothing about beer at all um chris is missed i've learned nothing ooh, yes <laughs> chris is it's true it's true but i really like this i think it has more it has more of a coffee e yeah. sort of flavor than a chocolate I would agree with Smells that. Smells were good. Yeah, there's like a there's kind of a toasting to it that's really nice. I'm a fan of yeah. the uh, the label design as a graphic designer. It's a very like filigree, almost like a little art mm-hmm. deco inspired. It's nice. Yeah, it's got like a uh, it's almost like the lettering that you would see on a circus tent, right? So yeah. it's that same sort of very stylish kind of thing. It's and like it's gilded exactly. And mm. it's funny because. When you look up Kalamazoo Stout on the internet, when you go to images, it's a very clean sort of classic looking Bell's uh, labeling where it's almost all white or off-white eggshell sort of colored. Um, So they've changed it up, which is good. I just love everything Bell does. Like They really have good stuff. This is spot on. Oberon is spot on. 
Two Hearted. Two Hearted is spot on. Uh, if you're interested in food pairings, uh, savory ones would be venison or lamb burgers, oysters, black olives. Ooh, you could uh, eat some dark chocolate or nutty desserts with it. Mm. Um, or if you're an eccentric, you could try it with baklava. That's from Bell's website right there there we go I feel like dark chocolate Sounds would be delicious. too much i would want something like yeah i think oysters would be kind of fun it's like maybe a palate cleanser or between like, different kinds of oysters you know it'd be great with this Ooh, it says te- it says teriyaki flavor Ooh. somebody go get some teriyaki okay. sauce and just put it right in there I would see go, what happens i would go like raspberry cheesecake so you've got like oh, your wow. chocolatey coffee toasty yeah. with like a mm. sweet creamy to go with it yeah, yeah i could make this work uh, maybe maybe <laughs> let's agree to disagree on allison that. what are you drinking i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie i don't know anything about a porter except it would kill okay. me like extra okay. kill me from what i understand mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's really yeah, it hoppy, very right kill it's extra hoppy um, i wouldn't say hoppy no? it's just really like coffee not... heavy for me that's what uh, i equated yeah. to more yeah. than like well, I, or something. yeah yeah i really like tried to google what it was and i probably just should have called one of you and asked i, I didn't really fully understand it but i just made a rum and coke because it felt right yeah <laughs> is that it you were close Feels right. is that am i close to what Feels a good. porter is no 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 no, <laughs> no, no you know what i should have got fine. Kahlua. it sounds like mm, and i didn't realize that perhaps. oh mm, i didn't get yeah. like coffee or just Go get a chocolate bar and just shove it in there. Okay. You'll be fine. That, <laughs> yum. I have a chocolate bar. That sounds great. <laughs> dipping. Yeah, just, just stick like, it right well, in. Dipping a go. chocolate bar in a rum and coke. Well, then since I'm so far off, it doesn't matter because Allison just kind of wanted a rum and coke. So it's there fine. There you go. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Allison wants It's often. right because it's what you wanted. Yes. And Allison, you get what you want. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm having Kraken and Coke. I would just take, I would just take like a spoonful of raw cocoa and then like wash it down with rum and coke and then you're closer. <laughs> that sounds what's long. what's the verdict on like oval teen can we just get oval teen yeah. and do Somebody, that i'm feeling like i'm really or glad Nesquik? i can't drink yeah. beer because that sounds awful if that's anything close to the porter i'm yeah. sorry anyone, guys anyone who tells you that beer is not an acquired taste is lying to themselves no one no one smells beer for the first time and is like oh yeah oh delicious no it doesn't happen yes. mm-hmm. yeah i'm learning more and more that maybe it's okay <laughs> I, so what have we been up to this week i feel like it's been a crazy week i haven't seen too much of any of you uh because i've been you know moving all of my personal effects from one place to another place but uh dan what have you been up to man uh i've been playing some games been playing <laughs> i was some, playing some uh i've been i s- kind of stopped playing the Sp- sony spider-man okay in the middle of it yeah uh just because something else came out and i can't remember what it was <laughs> uh, i did spider-man for a game that i can't remember which what i feel really bad about because i love <laughs> spider-man so much yeah. i'm not gonna t- i've talked about that before uh paper mario the origami king i'm actually gonna talk about that I'm gonna talk about it okay, later. Okay, okay, we're gonna come gonna back talk about to it right it. now. Right now, I'm gonna talk about the th- the. I'm gonna talk about the game that uh, I played on Friday night. It's a board game that I played oh. uh, with Hannah. Um, we played uh, we played a game called Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Consulting um, Detective, which is kind of like a re-release of a VHS game from like the '90s, but basically, it's like uh, you play a bunch of detectives who are kind of working with Sherlock Holmes to solve mysteries. Mm-hmm. And the idea of the game is that you want to use as few leads as possible to solve the mystery faster than Sherlock Holmes does. Holmes does. Okay. So That's there's cool. like questions you need to answer. Like, it was like, like we played the first one. There's 10 of them that come in this first box that you get. Okay. And they give you a newspaper. You have a map of London. You have like a list, a, a directory of places what? and people this in sounds London. sounds so cool. So and you, you also have like times. a list of informants. You can play yes. You well, there's more expansions after that, but there's diff, there's ten different stories. It took us mm. about three hours to fail at the first mystery. We got it wrong. <laughs> we got it so wrong. <laughs> and we also like the scoring basically is is like Sherlock Holmes just did the one that we did. He did in four leads. That's all he needed was to go to four places. And he figured out what happened. We went to like 12. <laughs> uh, so That's really it was like cool. our points were already zero. I have to try that. But it's really cool. It's really fun. It's a lot of reading. So if you like to uh, if you like to kind of act and play act or just like mystery solving stuff, it's really neat. Or if you really like Sherlock did, Holmes, I really like Sherlock Holmes. How did you get Holmes. your hands on this, Dan? <laughs> I 
ordered it through the internet yeah um, and, like I, amazon or something yes but it's also but also um i'd seen it at a few places and i'd always been really interested in it um but now that <laughs> i have someone who wants to play uh nerdy board games with yeah. me for an extended period of time uh it's it's nice to actually be able to do dumb things like that um not dumb but smart things so apparently it was first released for the fm towns computer and then was ported to dos nice. sega cd among other things which is kind of crazy yeah so it was yeah because it was like basically what it used to be was you would like watch a little movie yeah and it would be like it would be sherlock holmes and watson discussing like there's like oh this is the case of the blah blah blah, blah. and <laughs> and then you'd like use what they said in it and then you'd like fo- like click on things follow clues this is re- this is pencil and paper so it's lots of reading and set and reciting stuff but then you also have to say okay well we know this guy is dead so what do we have to figure out? We have to figure out who killed him and why they killed him. Got it. And then you go and like go from there. And then it's like, oh, well, we found this at this scene. So maybe we have to go to this place or it's like, oh, we should talk to the coroner and see what the coroner said about like how he died. And if that's a and if that's a thing or you can talk to Mycroft Holmes about like all government. <laughs> so, so when you got it wrong, when you fingered the wrong man, so to speak, was it a uh, was like what happened? Uh, well, nothing, because basically oh. what happens is you go to Sherlock Holmes, yeah. like the way the story works yeah. is that you go to Sherlock Holmes and you say, we've solved it. Here's the things. And then in the back, there's like, OK, these are the questions. These are questions that you need to answer. So you answer all of the questions. Who did it? Why did they do it? Where is this? Th-? Every once in a while, there's like a different series of questions. It's like, what was the meaning of this certain clue? Or like, how could this person have made an easy 10 pounds or something like that? Right. And then you go and then you basically say, okay, this is what we figured it out. And then you go and you read like Sherlock Holmes's description of what happened. And then from there, there's actually like a little a little note that you pull out that says, okay, here's all the right answers to those questions. Mm. We we d- we went too far down the rabbit hole. Like we went we like <laughs> had the solution, and then we were like, no, it can't be that. And then we just kept going further <laughs> down. The classic overthink. Sherlock doesn't doubt himself. That's true. Right. That's like one of the reasons he solves so fast, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, He's just like, uh, this com- is it. I don't know. Combaticus, <laughs> I heard you put put uh, put a cap on Final Fantasy VII recently. Yeah, I really did. I finished Final Fantasy VII. I finished Death Stranding. You finished oh Death Stranding? Oh my God, you've been putting your Those time in, Those are some wap wap wes. Here's some. Here's the wap wap wes sound. <laughs> Very loud yeah, this yeah. time. Yeah, I went right to the the wap wap um channel in the yes. Discord and was like, yo. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Death Stranding was was totally insane. Did you guys have an episode of, like dedicated to that? Because that was just bonkers. we didn't. We did know. I'm the only one who's played I... it so far. So, oh my god! Aside from you now, thought, just dance. I thought it was over like four times. Guess what? It's, it's <laughs> not. not. It's classic. Classic Hideo it's not, Kojima. Right? But actually, well, I since you have talked about a board game, uh, I want to talk a board game that me and my brother and my friend Christian, who's staying with us during quarantine. Um, played Risk Legacy. Okay. So oh. it's one of the legacy board oh, games. Yes. And we haven't played this game in five years. It makes you record like the date of the win at, like through all the uh, generations awesome. that you play. And it, like it gets so heated that we haven't played this game in like four <laughs> like or five Monopoly years. Like Monopoly level heated? Um, or? It just gets heightened. Well, it's, it's especially um, interesting. It's a legacy game. So... Uh, Winners get to like add things to the board, cities, name continents, things like really that. Cool. And when you play again, you get bonuses for like owning that continent mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, there are special like event triggers, like after you um, launch three nuclear missiles, like one player does that, then you open a new box inside the game box, and then like a new race of mutants what? will be added to the game next awesome. time you play. It. Like it's totally insane. <sighs> There's an envelope under the bottom of the box that just says. Do not ever open this envelope. And we're like, no. <laughs> it's just like, and we we kind of want to open it and just right, see what happens. Sure. But it, it says never open it. Does. It does. Huh. This is really so cool. Oh, that, that was a lot of fun. It took like about an hour and a half just to like relearn mm-hmm. how to play. Because especially once you add all these legacy things, you actually add stickers into the rule books and have to read like whole mm. new part, or parts of information just to like play again. So that was that is really cool. Then there's always just 
Yeah, it's a really cool game. I've won the most times. Uh, so so Ooh. then when you win, you get like you get bonuses and stuff, right? So what are your bonuses? Yeah. So I basically, um, I always take North America. Well, and I, I've named means. the continent and I've added like a major what city. What is the name and, of the like, continent? Three major cities. Uh, I think it's called like Ilium or something. It's all like Greek mythology themed. All my cities are like Sparta and uh, um, like Athens nice. and things like that. So every time I get that, I get like two extra um, troops every time mm-hmm. I spawn on that. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that's great. A- Allison, have you been doing anything fun lately? I mean, I'm kind of like I got back into Pokemon Go, so that's a thing. Ah, nice. They've changed it's, a lot. Ooh, well, that's what I was gonna say. Pokemon Go is like Pokemon Go at home now, right? Yeah, yeah. You 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 <laughs> can do a lot at home where you couldn't before. Like they have Team Rocket balloons that come around, and you can battle Team Rocket members, and you don't have to go anywhere, and they just eventually what? float around your house at different times. Um, the uh my my pokemon companion that's with me brings me like gifts i can send people so i don't have to go like spin pokestops as much now and uh yeah yeah you could do uh it gives you like randomly generated um quests that you get from spinning pokestops so you can do those every day um yeah yeah it's they've definitely changed it a lot to be more independent which is more me because people scare me um (laughs) So I can do things by myself yes. and like, like yes. I can find raids I can do alone, solo raids. Like they're really lame stuff. Oh, that's yeah, cool. They're really I like lame that. Pokemon, oh. but I can get my raid quests done that I have um, by doing yeah. those and things like that. So yeah, it's really cool. I'm enjoying playing that. Um, playing a little Final Fantasy 14 still. They just dropped a new patch and kind of um, helped make the main story quest not so long. They Yeah. Um, They've Ooh. cut that down a little bit, so that's cool. I'll hmm. be glad I to just... not have to do those. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I will. I'm just amazed that this game has been on such a journey mm-hmm. since the original release, mm-hmm. and I'm such so such a journey. I'm so such a journey. Um, I don't know. I <laughs> guess proud, but pride's not the word. Like I guess I'm so impressed by the leadership on the team. And those developers who continued to work on it even after it had such an abysmal launch. And they made it a truly great game to the point now where it's like a really serious contender for best MMO in market. Period. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. End of sentence. Mm-hmm. And that's that's like, that's crazy. That's crazy, especially when you're talking about how you're up against Titans like, wow. wow. I, I just, I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's great. I wish their customer service wasn't a bag of crap, but you know, it you gotta totally do what is. you gotta do. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was like quarantine related because I started playing really um, when quarantine hit and there were some customer service problems then because they were adjusting to going home. But then I realized like, no, this is just kind of how they are. I think, I think they're just not great at customer service at this point, which is unfortunate. Um, they're weak there, but, and, wow. and their, their website where you do all of your things like add time cards Ugh. and stuff is total trash. Oh, I don't bad. know who built yeah, that, it's, it's but garbage. they need to revamp that really um, seriously. But everything else I've, I've enjoyed in the game, like has been really positive. So it's like, those are downfalls, and the customer service bit is a huge downfall to me in a game like this. Right. Um, Especially a service game, right? Mm-hmm. This is a game yeah. as a service, yeah. Yeah, so that's really sad to me. Everything else hits the mark uh, for what I would expect in an MMO, though. So Anthem should be like trying to poach every single developer on the Final Fantasy XIV team right now. That's what oh I do. If, if I, I was in charge of putting <laughs> Anthem back together, that is exactly what I would do. <laughs> I haven't thought about yeah. Anthem in like the last three months. Why would you do this I'm to me? Sorry. I'm going, I need to Google what's going on with well, Anthem What's right going on with because... Anthem is that they're doing the under the hood stuff. Um, and it's not like none of it has gone into big full release. So like they're not really talking about it. They're in like, you remember how um, it starts with an Come N and it has an N. No Man's Sky. Yes. Yeah, that one. Um, no Man's it's Sky. like No Man's Sky where it was like sort of radio silence. And that's more or less where they're mm. at. Like they continue to tinker along the fringes. But I think behind <laughs> the scenes under the hood, they're doing some really big changes that like hopefully for them will pay dividends down the road. And frankly, I want that game to be good because I just like smashing stuff in 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 uh, robot suits. It seems fun <laughs> to me. Hey, just like be an Iron right. Man yeah. in space. Um, but dive, I've really been diving into Risk of Rain 2 lately, which has been, mm-hmm. which was like a hit for me 
just before it went into full release and then it went into full release this past week and they added a final boss um which i have since nice. beaten um but apparently nice. that doesn't count as beating the game because there is an achievement Boom. for beating this game but that's not it so i gotta figure it out nice. and it's um maybe you have to do it with like a full team of four maybe i don't i think i might have to do it on months on the hardest difficulty uh you probably have to do it on like the hardest difficulty. um but i'm just i'm really loving the game it's dense it's complex the more that i play it and the more they continue to develop it they add more choice to it and more like actual building of your builds which is really exciting for a roguelite and i just keep finding new stuff and like i also i started reading the item descriptions and they've got these really robust there's like there seems to be a really robust uh, not just backstory but some world building going on that's really cool for a game about yeah. like shooting space jellyfish, uh, right? Which I am really excited to dig even deeper into. Yeah, because you have to find like the things over and over. Like the more times you get an item, the more like information unlocks about right. it, and you really get to see kind of. And I've seen a few, I've seen games do this before, and it's really cool because then it gets you to kind of understand a little bit more about, like, that's how they build the world, especially because there's no, like, you don't have NPCs telling you story, mm -hmm. so you have to... And you you could very easily play this game without order. seeing any of any of the story or any of the mythology to it. But now that I've played I it enough, I'm like, I just like, what is going on here? Where did these people come from? Why are these two gods fighting against each other? What does that have to do with this planet? And why is the ship crashed here why i need to know <laughs> um but anyway that's been really great um I, and i dipped a toe back into borderlands 3 and then was like yep it's nice. not for me you still don't I like still it i don't like it man it's just trying so hard mm, i like it <laughs> mm. okay oh, okay it's not Sorry, for everyone Ian. i guess <laughs> people don't like fun i get it okay Ian's, uh, it, you can't tell, but Ian picked up a glass of brandy, is swilling it around, and is, is just <laughs> making making a pouty That's face. That's true. Just, yes. yes, it insists yes. upon itself. Borderlands is, Three is for the proletariat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know what, Allison? People don't like things, and that is their problem. That and that's why thing. we wanted to talk about Joe Rogan today. Oh, um, there you go. It, Look at so, that. <laughs> so, okay. I, I face palm every time because it's they're so, so good. good. That's right. Is really right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, Joe Rogan on uh, episode uh, 1514 of the Joe Rogan experience, which, like, dude, that's a, that's a, well, that's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of episodes. That's a, you know, and to think about it, like, he was doing the man show before this and doing, you know, like, he had a lot of things. He was doing the man show? Wasn't he on the man he show? He was, like, the second, I think he was, like, the second iteration of it Am or I something. Am I wrong? Is this the wrong guy to me? I'm pretty sure Joe Bergen was on that. Anyway, he had stuff before this, is what I was going to say. Yeah, the man show. Fear Factor. He did, he did Fear, Fear Factor. Factor. I know that. Somebody, Fear somebody, Factor. Game Brief Fact me on if he did okay, uh, so... the man show. <laughs> I feel like he. Oh wait, that was like Adam. Oh, he was. Something well, hold on. I don't know. All white guys look the same to me. It was Adam Carolla. <laughs> no, Adam Carolla and Jimmy. Allison Kimmel. is a bald white man. Yeah, <laughs> that hurts. It hurts me. Honestly, what is somebody else? Wow. Honestly, my bad. My bad, I, guys. Listen, it's not I your. It's like not. You it's not right, your fault. You all but... look the same. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yes, well, he does other things. He did Fear Factor. He did other he things. He was on the so, Man Show. That so is it's correct. impressive how long he's been doing this. I, yeah. Like, I, I didn't realize his podcast had been going for so long. Because I've heard bits time. and pieces of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, in any case, he started talking about video games uh, and his experience with video games a little bit on that, uh, uh, that episode. And he has done so before. Um, and he has a really negative view of them and, and we listened to it and there was sort of like this re this reaction on Twitter, um, from a lot of people, from a lot of gamers that were like, what the heck, man? Like we listen to your show and we don't feel this way about games and we don't feel like that's a fair representation. And I think Joe Rogan has had kind of his own experience with video games because he has talked about them being like an addiction for him and like something he didn't have control over. And so I think I just want to recognize that <clears throat> not everybody's ex experience is the same and that some people may 
become addicted to video games in a way that is unhealthy. Um, but what he was said particularly on this show is that it was like a hobby that you don't get any from and get anything from. Like, you know, you can pick up like karate or you can pick up something else and like learn a skill, right? Carpentry and you learn a skill and then you can produce something with it. Um, and that was his kind of his main point, particularly on this show. Um, and that video games, you know, you play and then there's nothing to show for it. So I, I just wanted to see what your reaction as panelists was to that. Well, I just wanted to start the conversation off with, I watch UFC <laughs> and Joe okay. Rogan, right. Joe Rogan okay. does announcements for UFC. And I think he's very good at that. I'll okay. start there. However, okay. I think he's very poor <laughs> at expressing himself and he sounds like a douchebag. <laughs> like 99.9% .9 of the time he speaks. Okay. That's what I will say. In UFC, like he's announcing and I'm like, he's great at this. He's so good. Like he's he's hitting these points. He sounds great. He's entertaining. I'm into this. And then like I listen to his podcast and all I can do is like have this fierce rage about everything he says and how he says it because yeah. he's so insensitive and so like stuck in yeah. my way is the right way and right. no other way exists so yeah. i want to start there and say that I, i'm pretty sure we all agree that what he said was wrong the way he said it right in that yeah, podcast I, yes i yes the way he said it was wrong i after listening to but of course but of course <laughs> uh Whenever the part that people kind of cut out of that and like posted right. on Twitter also didn't do him any favors oh. with that, like it, they really cut out the part that made him be like, yeah, video games are pointless and blah, 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 blah. But then he does. As I continued to listen to it, I understood why he thought those things, which was kind of like where whenever especially what, what on podcasts, things you talked about dan specifically like so like because well because and this is the same thing you brought up earlier it's like because that's his, his experience with video games is very different from the one that you have the one that i have like ninja who makes m billions of dollars sure. playing fortnite yeah. like has a very different experience playing video games than joe rogan did because he, he explains like how him he was like when he was playing he would get nothing done he literally like lost time because of it and and it's like, well, yeah, then I understand why you think video games are so detrimental is because to you, they have the effect where it is like something you're addicted to. Like you, you need that thing to continue going. Yeah. And, and I also, you know, uh, Allison did a little bit of, um, bopping around in Joe Rogan's, uh, discography, so to speak for his podcast, which thanks Allison. Yeah. That, that uh, might be why I have this research. I, that that might be the reason I have this opinion is I listened to a lot of Joe Rogan over the last week and <laughs> you OD'd on Joe on Joe it's Rogan. A lot. <laughs> Yeah, and and there were times when he would say things like, you know, uh, video games ha are sometimes good for people, uh, and he says that at one point in one of his episodes. It's like, like a really early have, episode, by the way. Yeah, they're like, supposed I to have think benefits. Opinion changed. Benefits for kids uh, in certain ways, you know, like it opens up new ideas. They have different experiences, hand-eye coordination for whatever that's worth. Um, but I, I, I think one of the main things that I wanted to push back on about those comments in particular is just like hobbies have always existed, right? Since humans have right. had the ability to spend time, not productively because of, you know, domestication of animals and irrigation and all that jazz. Um, we've, we've come up with things to do just because they make us happy. Right. And, and music, right. Music is one of those things. We don't do it because music is productive. We get nothing from music. We do it because music makes us happy. It changes our outlook or it, or it makes us feel things. And I think that, that, there should be space in the human experience to do things that are unproductive and for those things to be viewed positively. And I think video games can be one of those things for some people. And I, ju I just don't want, I don't want people to think that the only worthwhile hobbies are the ones that create something like collecting stamps. You're not, you're not gaining anything from collecting stamps. They're never going to be worth anything. Well, mm, I mean, they do have monetary value, <laughs> but, but it could bring you a great deal of satisfaction. And that's, what's important about it. It's not, um, it's not what you gain from it. I have other yeah, things. I definitely yeah. agree uh, with a lot of what Allison is saying, especially with the context of the older uh, snippets too. Like it seemed like his opinion did change. Yeah. But I guess like he was saying, he compared it at one point to 
he was saying there's like there's no way you can like be economically successful on it or like at least he didn't see it because he right. thought you know games are trendy and things like that and uh, don't last long but then he was also comparing it to like how uh, comedians try to get break into the comedy business and he was like um why would you risk you know going into trying to be like a streamer to make money off this thing in the same way like why would you be a comedian if you're not going to make it, why would you pursue that sort yeah. of thing? But he is a comedian who did pursue it and is successful from it. So I was like, this, that's this kind is, of a weak it's comparison. Like ninja, like, it's like Ninja talking about comedy and being like, what a waste of time. Like, I don't know. Comedy is the yeah. worst. You just get up on stage and talk and comedy? people laugh. Like, you're never going to make money doing that. Come on, Joe. That that was something that uh, that when I was listening to the different pieces of his podcast, that's why I posted those kind of like three clips that I had based on, you know, his opinions on gaming over time. Like at first he was clearly into it and he like, he paid a lot of money to have a decent internet connection right. so he could play. Like so he, he could saw play Quake. value. So he right? could play, so he could play Quake. Quake. Gotta get that, like, gotta get yeah. that, uh, that uh, ping down, man. You gotta get that right. ping low. Right. And like, like, yeah, he got like a T one a line T1 or something. Line. Like, like you, oh man, I looked into that when I was younger because I didn't understand any of it, and that stuff is expensive. <laughs> yeah. There's no way, no yeah. way I could have afforded that. Um, and 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 that's the thing. Like he had, he was there with us in early gaming experiences, right? Like he was kind of the same place I was with gaming and being passionate about it. And and that was the kind of thing is like, uh, it, he, there was the next time I heard him talk about gaming was about like how he doesn't understand how people are making money on gaming and how he doesn't understand how Twitch works and how the money is coming to these creators and how he doesn't understand, you know, the, the tournaments that happen and why people are, are doing the, um, the whole like tournament environment where they're, where they're getting paid to play these games. He like just didn't understand it. I think was a lot of it. I completely agree. It showed a complete like it, like ignorance or lack of like trying to find figure out what other people find fascinating about video games. What he took away was a bad experience. Um, I don't necessarily play video games for um, any kind of like competitive. Like sometimes it's just an emotional experience. Those mostly are the games that I play. Like I go for like great story like like feelings like yeah. i've like cried to video games like that shows me oh, that like same. i really enjoy something same. um and it just showed that he well, not only lacks an understanding of modern gaming in a sense that there is economic and social value that there's a lot of sort of digital clout currency kind of thing that like kids these days like there's different like digital <laughs> assets are like, it was just <laughs> <laughs> It just showed like a lack of understanding of modern gaming, just even in economic sense. And it also showed that he had never taken the time to expand his horizons to get anything emotionally fulfilling out of the game. And I was just like really disappointed that it even tried to even elaborate. And he was like, send these kids to like boot camps. They need like a good kick in the ass. I was like, that's, that's so weird. That's not, that's not so that's problematic. That's not, no. uh, Somebody needs uh, to send Joe a copy of uh, Gone Home. Maybe I'll gift it to him in his podcast. And be like, you know what? Bud? See if he see if he plays it. See, see if this see if this works for you. See how this works for you. Well, what, um, was, what was interesting is I was kind of talking to somebody on Twitch about this topic that we were going to have that we were going to have the podcast episode and everything about it. Yeah. And uh, it was on Curious's Twitch actually. Okay. You guys remember Curious? Oh, of Curious, course. you die. Of course. So I was watching his a uh, friend of the podcast. Everybody go follow me. Curious. You know, yeah. Yeah. On yeah. the Twitch. Stream. Um, uh, Curious is fantastic. But I was talking in his uh, Twitch chat. He asked me what our next episode was about. And I explained it. And one of his listeners actually, or watchers, sorry, we're list We have listeners. We have listeners. He has, <laughs> he has watchers. watchers. Um, one of his, his uh, guys said something that I thought was really interesting. Um, I can't remember his full name on there, but it's heck something. I called him heck. AGC. Oh, um, sorry, I wish heckin I knew your what? full name. Um, it was a heckin' good comment, though. Yeah, it was a heckin' good comment. <laughs> if you hear this, please let me know. I will appropriately uh, tag you in it. But uh, he said that he, people don't understand the adif- difference, too, because it sounds like Joe Rogan had a gaming addiction, the way he talked about right. gaming. Um, and 
he kind of talks about it in a way somebody would talk about like alcoholism or another addiction like that in that he just had to stop at cold turkey and never go back again or he was he felt like he was going to fall in a hole and that listener brought up the point that um that there's a difference between chemical addiction Mm -hmm. and emotional addiction which combaticus just mentioned like is there like an emotional addiction to gaming i Mm. certainly think there can i don't think see any reason why there couldn't be right and i also think uh, i also think that games often play and i and i actually shouldn't say games i should say that certain developers often play on the chemical addiction of games right when we're talking about loot boxes and we're talking about randomized loot drops and we're talking about uh anything that's like gambling that is like that's a that's a fucking chemical addiction right there Mm -hmm. and yeah because it releases those those like endorphins yeah the endorphins in your brain just being like oh yeah oh yes um and and that's dangerous and can be but there's also the ter- like if gaming becomes something that takes you away from the thing the other things that make you happy in your life then i would also classify that as you know an addiction in in the sense mm. that maybe joe rogan experienced it so i don't want to i don't want to diminish that i think that's real and with gaming because it's a, a thing that a lot of times requires re- repetition to become competent at that it also can lean towards that as well i mean in in like uh, we've talked about this before well it was a long time ago actually it might have been in 2018 uh that in 2018 the world health organization added oh yeah gaming disorder to the international classification of diseases right. technically it's still not in like the dsm-5 which is like the american psychological journal of disorders mm-hmm. but the science to watch out for it basically it, it reads very similar to gambling addictions because of the same sort of things where it says like, uh, here are the signs to watch out for. Play along at home if you want. Um, so <laughs> oh, uh, if you think about gaming all or a lot Dan, of the this time. this is the worst game of bingo I've ever played in my entire life. <laughs> I, I mean, it, if you want, I could call the mandatory fun commissioner in here. I don't think, I don't think, think he, would, he would appreciate it. Continue. It's, I mean, it's not. Uh, so We're playing Never Have I Ever. With yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing on TikTok that all the kids are doing right now. Um, How many are there? Uh, ten thing. Put up 10 fingers if you haven't ever like you're a bad cat <laughs> um so the other the other ones are uh, if you feel bad when you can't play like if you have this the a, a bad feeling when you can't play video games if you need to spend more and more time playing to feel good not being able to quit or even play less not wanting to do other things that you used to like because of video games uh, having problems at work, school, or home because of your gaming. If you play despite having all of these issues. Um, if you lie to the people close about you about how much time you spend playing on video games. Uh, and if you use gaming to ease bad moods or feelings. That last one, I think, is so this is smidge subjective. Well, they're all subjective, right? But it's like yeah, it isn't any right. one of these things in isolation probably isn't an indication that you're addicted. All of them or many of them at the same time, maybe. Right. Allison, you... Right. Which in... Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to say... No, just because in one of those earlier, like, Joe Rogan episodes Mm -hmm. where he's talking to Bill Burr and Bill Burr's talking about how he was playing GTA 3. No, he's playing Call of Duty and how he'd been Uh, doing, like, the sniping stuff. No, it wasn't Call of Duty. It was uh, Medal of Honor. Old old school Call of Duty. (laughs) Yes. How he was playing Medal of Honor and there's, like, the sniping was, like, so cool and so good in that game that he'd, like, be walking around and he'd be thinking about it all the time and he'd be, like, seeing people and just being, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's thing. I mean, like, I personally know when I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2, all I could think about was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 because that game was, like, just, it's encompassed my being, well, you know? So, okay, I was going to ask this question of Allison, but maybe I'll, I'll dig into Dan here. Dan, like, Uh-oh. hearing those things, do you identify with any of them? I think one of the things... See, this could be this is hard because it's all since we have a podcast about gaming, yeah. it's hard to answer this one. Yeah. But like <laughs> the the uh the feeling bad when I can't play. Yeah. Uh just because like we have a podcast about video games, sure. so I I feel like I need to play video games in order to be able to stay up on stuff. But also I mean that I mean that, but also like the like thinking about gaming all the time. It's not something I constantly think about, but when I'm like really into a game, I do think about it more. And does that does that worry you? Like, are you concerned? I am not concerned about it because I can. I feel like I can disassociate. Like I can. I could be if you know if my dad says, "Hey, come on over to dinner tonight. We're doing this." I'm not going to say no and then secretly play video games and not do it and 
just to right. just to play video games. I'm going to go over and hang out with my parents. Yeah, Allison. So for me, and, and this is kind of a complicated topic for me, because I, I, I think at least five or six of those things really related to me. Yeah, but that's why I was I watching can... your fingers go down like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Do I think I have a problem with video games? No. Do I think that video games are a big part of my life? Yes. And I think that's the difference. I don't think video games are hurting my life in any way except for maybe relationships i would say Hmm. video games sabotage my relationships a lot of the time but relationships to to clarify like with your parents or your family or with significant others or with significant romantic romantic partners okay got it. so i feel like i'm i'm a better person by myself because um i i haven't ever found somebody who's like fully okay with the amount of time I want to play video games. I know that's that's real huh. shitty, but and I I'm not willing to sacrifice that because I do think it's a big part of me. And do I think it's addictive? No, I don't think it's an addiction. I just think like somebody else who enjoys reading a lot. Right. Or somebody else right. who yeah. enjoys going to the movies a lot and things like that. Like it's just a part of who I am and you take it or leave it and I don't think it's necessarily problematic. I do know it's a fact of me and I take it into account with like friendships and, and relationships and all of that. Like if you can take it, you can take it. If you can't, you can't, it's a part of me and that is what it is. And that's kind of how I see it, but I can get where that could hamper people and, and anything can be addictive, right? Even let's say reading, like I think reading can be addictive. You can become kind of a hermit out of it and like, isolate yourself from human beings and gaming is a similar thing i mean there's a reality show called my strange addiction like people eat yeah. paper and they're addicted to that but that's not like there's, a i'm sorry i'm not so laughing things. at this show but yeah come on come yeah on. It's, it's 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 that's that's the thing like anything in your life can be addictive and everybody needs to take everything in moderation or mm. to what is appropriate for them and if it's not appropriate for you and it's not working with your life, then you do need to change it. And I guess that's what he he decided. But I think yeah. he took like a really negative stance on gaming because of it. That one of the things that he said in one of his other episodes was that he felt like uh, certain certain games are respectable. And then he mentioned chess, right? Uh, and then he was like, but video games aren't that. And so I'm wondering like what the distinction that Joe th- is making there is like what is that distinction and uh does it still apply in 2020 yeah i think i mean he basically started off saying if people if kids don't have good examples they they lay they're lazy and they lay around right. basically or something. I hate that. But then he also goes into talking about <laughs> he talks about chess masters and like how he respects like a grand chess master and things like that mm-hmm. but but also like invalidates these video game experiences because these kids aren't getting like physical like toughness or whatever which is i guess how they view like worth it's they what what they want to their kids to be racist they want to have like a similar experience to them because that's what they value that they learned in their childhood childhood or whatever but it was weird that he was comparing he was like validating like a chess master because that's gaming that's literally gaming that's just like a very specific ancient context um, but also in a separate clip that Allison shared, he was talking about how amazing it can be for like cognitive response time mm-hmm, and things like mm-hmm. that, um, gaming. And I was like, what's the difference between like a quarterback having to make like a split second decision uh, in a game and having to lead sort of a crew to like get your ball across the field and having making these split second decisions? Like, what's the difference between like a leader in a raid party having like calling shots or everyone knowing their role? within you know a raid party or something like a healer knows their team knows everyone's skills knows that this person tends to attack more or yeah. whatever and they're going to balance those things out in, in an attempt to move the team forward those are like social skills and community skills in i would say a lot of the same ways that good physical team sports build in the same way and i don't think he really took that into account it was yeah unfair. i agree I, I think i think the insistence upon sort of like that f- physical acuity as like the most important thing for children yeah. it is is scary to me and i think it and it reflects this sort of like hyper masculine um hyper masculine world that it seems like joe rogan lives in or comes from right when the best thing that our youth can be are strong physically strong instead of 
um, right. mm. compassionate or intelligent or critical thinkers like that to me says something that uh that is that is deeply unsettling about our society is that we like strength shouldn't be the be all end all we 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 understand strength right strength is being able to drop a bomb on someone that's strength but knowing when not to is perhaps more important i think he also like he also like curates his guests around those like people who are right with his things yeah. There's a, I also I found it what, super fascinating that I kept getting I kept getting ads for like sports betting. <laughs> of course you did. That I was watching for. Yeah. I was like, uh... hey, I, it only took like five trips to the Ultra Sabers website for that to be everything that pops up on my Facebook, right now, <laughs> which oh my I am not God. sad about. But still, it's like, oh god. No, no, I think that's that's kind of it too. If if you watch the podcast where he talks to Ben Shapiro, let me be clear. Ben Shapiro Ooh. is not an intelligent man, but I would say that's a different kind of <laughs> podcast guest for him. Right. And um, and if you watch that one, you can see he's outmatched. Like he he does ask Ben Shapiro some questions I think other interviewers wouldn't have that mm-hmm. should be asked to Ben Shapiro. Um, so that was a little interesting because Ben Shapiro was off off his uh, toes a little bit and had to kind of figure out how to answer these things. But when he has a guest on that's like a little outside of the I pick things up and put them down realm, if you will, yeah. um, it, it, it it's he, he clearly just doesn't know exactly how to respond to some things. So I think you're right. He does curate the guests kind of around that and to understand mm. like what a game like League of Legends really takes intelligence wise versus right. chess takes mm. intelligence wise. Oh I think gosh. he just doesn't understand it. He yeah. doesn't understand that it's actually more for a game like League, where you have to anticipate your opponent's moves plus do all these other things at the same time. And all in like really fast real time and be able to do all of the like pointy clicky stuff that's also necessary to boy be successful for League. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Um so we gotta gotta improve that AP. Yeah. So <laughs> so Joe, uh, you know, I think you got it wrong on this one, buddy. Um, Joe. Never mind. I'm going to say that. <laughs> but uh, I'll I'll see if I can get you a copy of Gone Home, and maybe we can get you on the show sometime. Uh, <laughs> until that happens, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we'll talk about our favorite textures in video gaming. <laughs> oh, that's it for the first half. Stick with us. Hi, everybody. Ian here. Just wanted to check in to say thank you so much for listening to the show. We really appreciate your support. A couple of things real quick. If you want to come chat with us on our Discord, you can find us by going to bit.ly slash disco brew. If you want to support us and also get some really cool games every month in the process, you can do that over at bit.ly slash game brew. Uh, okay, that's it for me for now, and I hope you enjoy the second half of the show. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Game Brew Podcast, episode 89. We are drinking Bill's Kalamazoo Stout from, from, you know, from a glass, from a cup, from a chalice. In uh, in Dan's case, from a boot. It's not a boot. It looks. I, I'm no. It's just my <laughs> just a regular glass. No. Uh, oh, you're talking about other Dan. God <laughs> damn it! What's happening? You. Um, yeah. I I was looking up what Brewer's licorice is, and uh, it is. Mm-hmm. It, it apparently is an ingredient that increases head retention, and Ooh. imparts its own unique flavor to beer. Which is probably. I wish I had a. I it wish I had. To retain your. Head. That's right. That's no, I wish I wish I had beer. something that retained his retention. <laughs> uh, but the. Uh, so this is very coffee y. I stopped drinking coffee because I drink coffee too fast. This is making me drink this beer too fast, also mm. because it tastes so much like coffee. You still have half of it. Is did you pour mm. more? Uh, this is the third one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I didn't notice oh. you report. This is um. <laughs> this is the third one. <laughs> this is the third. Never one. mind then. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Because because literally, I like take a drink. I'm just like, oh, this is really good, and then I just keep drinking yeah. it like it's water because that's how I drink coffee, which is why I had to stop drinking coffee mm. because my liver was like, stop. No, they, they go down. <laughs> they go down easy. That's true. Well, then it's appropriate. I'm drinking rum. Well, and I Coke. was gonna say. <laughs> 
I was going to say, like, uh, Allison's opinions on Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's not what I expected. Oh! <laughs> oh, wow. What were oh, you expecting? Do you like it? Do you like the Kalamazoo stout? I, I don't like it. Oh. oh! Yay! You're on Team Allison. Now people will be like, oh, man. Uh, no, I don't like the beer, but I did like Final Fantasy. Hey, there okay. we go. What is it? What don't you like about the beer? I want to know. I want to know what you don't like about it. I think coffee tastes like dirt. Oh. That would be why. That's a good that explanation. Would do it. So that's pretty much like the base argument. Uh, I mean, do I need to elaborate? <laughs> no, no, that's pretty much nah, it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That makes sense to me. Then. I like the taste of dirt, though. So, but I'm downing it because I'm. So committed. It is a game brew fact that Allison enjoys the taste of dirt it is. very much. That is a game brew fact. <laughs> I also appreciate that uh, Combaticus is committed to it, and so he's going to do it, and that's good. He's like, I'm drinking these. Yee. Because not gonna that's why we keep having I'm you on. Do it, and I'm doing it for the people. <laughs> Just do it for the it, Doing it. Allison, doing what it right. rum did you make your uh, your drink with? Oh, my favorite, Kraken. Kraken. I have, I like let me ex- I have a bottle of Kraken that is like this tall. I don't know how to put that into actual words. Uh, it's she's going from lower boob to yeah. uh, the top of her head. Do you, so do you, boob to imagine head that. Do you ever size. have to answer questions about like you know <laughs> someone asks you what's in your drink and, and you're like there's cracking in it and they're like, they're like there's crack in it and you're like no <laughs> <laughs> no actually like, but considering my personality I'm shocked that hasn't come up more. That is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> um oh boy yeah uh so because we had such a hard-hitting first half and i know mm-hmm. listeners out there i know it was tough to get through we're gonna have a nice light little second half here we're gonna do a little like we're gonna have fun <laughs> and uh we're gonna talk about i'm not gonna have any fun just because you we're gonna said talk that. about the fluffy <laughs> as fluffy as dan's chest hair and it could be whichever oh. dan you want honestly uh, uh, can we have references we're, about, we're talking about the fluffiest <laughs> most uh, feelingest uh, of Dan textures point, in video, game, video games. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. The best textures. So, so textures are these things oh. basically like, you know, you put polygons together and then you use the texture as kind of like a wrap. Think about it like wrapping paper, right? And you put the wrapping paper around the polygon and that's what, you know, makes your stuff in video games. Um, and sometimes textures are good, like in games we love, like Uncharted. And sometimes they're bad, like in games we love, like Risk of Rain 2. The textures in that game are bad. Uh, that doesn't mean it's a bad game, but the textures are. So we wanted to talk about some of our favorite right. textures. And the first one I wanted to throw out to argue about is Minecraft grass. I love the texture of <laughs> Minecraft grass. I think it's are you perfect. Talk- I- okay, okay. Are you talking about the texture of the grass that like sticks up out of the ground that you no, have no, no. to smack? No, no, no. So dirt, so unmined dirt blocks. Correct. You're the talking grass about. that grows on top of the unmined okay. dirt, bro- dirt blocks is 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 one of the best textures in gaming. It's poppy. It's got enough variety, but you know it's grass. It's like super simple. You know, like all things in Minecraft are, but immediately is recognizable it- as grass. It's like, hey, it's green on the top and brown on the bottom. That must be grass. Yeah, either that or, you know, um, uh, that Leto character as the Joker, you know, green on the top <laughs> and brown on the bottom. <laughs> he was very pale on the bottom. No, I'm very <laughs> confused about that <laughs> but anyway, particular comparison. Um, uh, other textures that we like include Dan. Da- Dan is not a texture. Oh, Dan 2.0. No, I want Dan 2.0 to tell me what the best texture. (laughs) I'm bringing texture to this podcast. Oh, Oh, uh, you are very scruffy. I don't know. I just want want to put my hands in your beard and just go like this. Because texture is. uh, So, like, I was like, when you even started, when the assignment was about textures, I was like, how do you talk about textures? And I was like, "Uh, I don't know. But so so there's a good and a bad to it. Like, there's like, so good texture is just a, a. a result of a lot of things like it's you know uh, investment in the game i guess like whether it's a triple a game whether it's, there's there's huge production behind right. it it's computing power it's rendering power these are all different factors that can also depend uh depending on the your processing capability things like that and there's an interesting the same uh sort of thing where you know like technology gets stronger or like more powerful as it gets smaller like that same algorithm there's this I think it's sort of parallel with our expectations mm-hmm. 
as gaming comes out where it's like you know that the power is going to be stronger so you expect the mm. textures to be there so my i immediately started thinking of final fantasy 7 remake because i was just like really excited about it uh to give some context i'd never played the original um but i was a huge wow. uh Nobuo Uematsu yeah. fan so like I had like heard the entire score yeah. basically and like fell in love with it uh but never had any context cool. story so like the story was brand oh, new wow. to me it was just like and I'd seen oh, like like a kid at Disney World designs because oh. you can't avoid it yeah oh. so this was like a brand new experience for me and I was like oh this is so fun and like I'm expecting it to be like the greatest thing like it has to be the pinnacle of yeah. technology right now and the textures were just <laughs> fucking shit like everywhere I was like, oh my god, like, this is where we are? Like, everything was great about this game. I loved so many things about it. But, like, that was, like, the one are you, thing Are you talking about the remake? It was the textures. I was like, come on! Or the original. Yeah, the remake. Yeah, yeah, the remake. Sorry. Yeah, to be clear, I was just, like, so disappointed by the textures when, like, for me, Final Fantasy is, yeah. like, top tier. Like, that's, like, where technology is. Like, cutscenes, things like that. I was just like so disappointed. That's a bummer. That's, that's a the, bummer. Like I was like, I'm gonna let this thing ruin. Like it for the me? the like, textures of the walls, the textures of the characters, the texture of the items. Just yeah, just like being close to like a metal door or something. Yeah. It was just like pixely and gross. I understand I what like, you're saying. Aw. I understand what you're saying because that's the it Dude, the did you look at people's like... hands from the original one? Like we're the, come on. <laughs> I know but it's this thing. It's this thing about, you know. Oh, I'm going to uh, pick up one of my beer bottles like I'm one of the. And maybe that's I got it. it. <laughs> like, I got it. I'm going to drink it. Like, I played that game and did not notice the textures, but maybe it's because I'm coming from what I knew the original was and how, like, basic it was. So seeing it in the updated format, sure. those little things didn't bother me. But it's interesting to hear it from somebody else's yeah. perspective who didn't enjoy them. So was it, like, muddy for you as well or just the pixelation? It was just like pixel pixelation, I guess. I don't know. And I also I guess... like still have a problem with like this like natty natty hair. It oh looks like yeah, it's, it's just full of gnats. Yep. Like I want it to be perfect. Like give me perfect. Or don't. I want to see me. all like, the I'm individual strands of Cloud's stupid spiky hair. Instead, you see like how do you yeah. make that all hair? The... That yeah. is the question. Yeah, you need to be able to see it. I'm like, just don't even release it until we all have next gen consoles. Listen, like, don't call even the game. Pixar. <laughs> Get whatever they used for Sully in uh, freaking uh, Monsters Incorporated. Uh, yeah, and make that the hair no, engine the... you use. Can we borrow yeah, your I'm hair? I'm looking at it, and it is. Like, is the textures you... are kind of blah in this game. I didn't even notice it. That's what I'm saying, it. is, like, you don't. That's because you're looking like, through I've it played, through I've nostalgic older classes. games. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I really was. I had, like, played older games and was like, this is a oh, step yeah. back. I mean, there's a ton of games well, that I mean, do like, textures better. I mean, like, yeah, you look at, like, a... Like a um freaking uh metro 2033 oh yeah texture on like a metal door versus the texture you get in final fantasy 7 remake and you're gonna get huge differences in yeah. it because it's like what the because that's the whole metro 23 is about the environment you know it's about where you are mm -hmm. more so than about like this giant anime-esque story mm -hmm. which and that's one of my and like the metro games because chris isn't here i'm gonna talk about him a little bit because those <laughs> have some of my favorite textures on just all of the because everything is old and everything is reused they have this aged texture on basically every single thing you use and it's really really good mm. like ever they like really went down to details like metal is rusting uh like the leather stuff is wearing away paper is basically all yellowed like there's no new paper no one's milling paper post apocalypse right it's, it's so that's really cool. Yeah, I, it uh, it is cool in a game like that where you can really see the developers thinking from a standpoint of, OK, if these items and these characters lived in this world, what would their textures be like? And everybody's kind of grizzled and like hair is kind of unkempt and things like that. Really well thought out. Whereas like I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, but like, uh, yeah, maybe like a Final Fantasy seven, right? Like Aerith and Cloud and all these other people, they live basically in like the underworld and undercity. And yet they're all like perfectly, beautifully kept, very clean. <laughs> they're very clean. <laughs> right? oh, yes. Definitely not going up after a gritty realism. Um, one of the games that really blew me away when it comes to texture was this game called The Swapper, which we've talked about a couple of times. Um, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a puzzle game. Um, and it was made uh, by two University of Helsinki students. Um, and what they did was they took, uh, like, they made clay forms. 
uh, um, for the levels. And then they took those clay forms and they sort of like photographed them and then made them the assets for the game itself. So mm. everything has a really like, it's like you're playing a game in claymation. It's really, really, really neat and then lit in yeah. really interesting ways. And like, if you look up screenshots, that, strangely, all the st screenshots are super blurry and none of them look good. But this game is just, it has really great textures <laughs> because all the textures are basically like real textures on clay things, which is super cool way to go about building a game, I thought. One of the Absolutely. one of the games I'm playing right now is uh, Paper Mario and the Origami King. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Which I know Dan, I know Dan 2.0 is playing that as well. Yes, And yes, yes. it's really cool because it plays into the paper aspect. Like the other Paper Marios were like, it had like tongue in cheek, like, yeah, everything's paper kind of stuff. This one literally is just like, yeah, everything's motherfucking paper. Like your paper, your friends are paper. Guess what? There's origami bad guys that are uh, like obnoxiously paper. Um, and there are so many things where it's like they put real world objects into it. So at one point you fight a box of uh, spoiler alert for Paper <laughs> Mario and the Origami King. Uh, at one point you fight a uh, a tin of colored pencils and they're like <laughs> true. they're like giant co like it, imagine like a, a colored pencils but also there's tiny little paper mario so like it's this big thing but it's also like been drawing on stuff so you can see that the textures for those items are different from like the paper mario sort of video oh, game rendered stuff like they look like real world items that have been put in this game world, is, which is really cool. That, that is a really interesting thing. And it looks like, it also looks like Paper Mario is a 2D character living in a more or less 3D world, which is an interesting way yes. to go about it too. Like, Yeah, very much. Like he's, yeah, the, like everyone is paper, so they only have two dimensions, right. which is why you can like, Fold, yeah. And like the earlier games, you could like fold up, turn into a little paper airplane or uh, slide through walls and stuff like that. And this one, it's more about origami. So you can like fold up. You have like your arms can fold up into these big things. You could take and pull walls down because there's like stickers over stuff. You have to find a bunch of toads that are usually folded up into little origami creatures that are around there. So it's like you see, oh, a bug and you smash it and it's actually a toad. Hmm. Yeah, like reducing the the fidelity of like you know like we all we know that like Nintendo systems aren't graphics engines like systems like that's sort of like we inherently we understand yeah. that so they rely on IP a lot um, and they this this particular game that Dan's talking about like the water like the water is oh the water the edges are like gorgeous so it's like I don't know if you if you guys have like crafted or anything like that but there's like thick like uh, cardstock and if you rip it it can have this like sort of like interesting texture mm -hmm. that's not a perfect rip and it's kind it, of fluffy, it will like layer almost. water like ripped edges over top of each other and it's like it, i don't know i would just look it up like just look up paper mar like origami king water i don't know if you there's a clip somewhere there's probably really people have been talking about it the way that they like yeah i also so with the way that they've just like really taken it to the next level right. in terms of the entire world is constructed yeah. of paper and you can see paper texture because we're at like a graphics level on the Switch where you can and, see slightly yeah. better. And Nintendo's been guess. doing that a lot too with like their games where it's like the yarn Yoshis or the yarn mm -hmm. Kirby's. It's funny that you mentioned like the NES uh, NES titles and there's some stuff on the NES that has some really beautiful textures. Like if you look at Mega Man 6, some of the like the trees and the background art in the Mega Man games is really intricately oh, yeah. put together. Those are like technical limitations, right? Would those count as pre-rendered backgrounds like on those old systems? Uh, I, guess. I mean, I guess because mm -hmm. technically they're like pre-rendered, not so much as like it's not like, yeah, it's not procedurally no. generating these backgrounds. You're moving across an established Yeah, system. yeah, yeah. Right. So definitely pre-rendered. When I see a game like Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm like, where are the textures? But there's also, because it sets technological um, advancements, set expectations so high, I think there's really interesting opportunities to, to subvert those uh, on mm. purpose, like in ways like Origami King or... My my good example of textures would be I don't know if you guys have played the platformer Gris. Oh, of course, which is like yes. A game about well, grief. I haven't played it, but I've heard a ton about it. Yeah, but it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous game, and it's a platformer, so it's just like side scrolling. But it uses um, it's basically the whole canvas is just like a piece of it's slightly paper textured. But as you progress through the game, um, and it's about processing grief, you start to bring back colors mm. into your world. 
and there's just these beautiful watercolor mm-hmm. textures like everywhere over the whole game and it's like really emotional so like subverting you know technological advancement where you can expect high things you can like step back the limitations of the game and exceed expectations by doing something creative by limiting i think yeah another really great example of the texture sort of being integral to the gameplay is a game called gora goa um, which was a switch and a tablet title that just has these really it's almost like mandala-esque designs that you like move in and through and there's like an mc escher ish vibe going on too but like the textures of these things like you'll get like different panels and like the circle on one will like align with like a, a sphere on the other and then you align them and it like clicks in and then you know you can uh, like change a thing there so it's actually like using those textures as a gameplay model which is really really cool as well yeah Love that. okay Puzzles. so i feel like i did this maybe wrong this assignment i just <laughs> picked my favorite one no 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 no. that's, that's great fine. Um, you didn't do it wrong at all we just over researched so i i kind of did like silent <laughs> hill 3 oh, oh yeah Oh my God! Yes. So really specifically, so I, when I thought about this, I thought I can't pick anything, but then I thought about how important like the textures are in a game like like Silent Hill, where like everything being really muted underneath, and then you have the blood on top. Sure. Just creates mm-hmm. this environment, and how you know the rooms the rooms yeah. change and things like that. So specifically, I picked the circle room in Silent Hill Three. If anyone remembers mm-hmm. it, where it's like a blood soaked room looking and then um eventually uh if you stay in there long enough the blood moves and forms these circles that just kind of come in together and do a a pattern on the walls and floor yeah um Ew. which was just like a Love really it. interesting oh my God, moment. This yeah <laughs> yeah it was like a really interesting moment in a game that i've never experienced before where the environment kind of interacted in that way and um yeah it just kind of made me think about that game as a whole and how important the textures were to me and how there was just so much of the environment that made that world scary and in and important um yeah yeah, that that was really a big one and the silent hill games have always done a really good job making like ordinary things a little bit wrong and then terrifying yes. because they're a little bit wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like in Silent yes. Hill 4 where there's that door with like the Ooh. chains and shit over it, it's like the rest of the kitchen is like perfectly normal. And then you look at mm-hmm. the door and you're like, honestly, what the hell is going on here? This is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And and like in Silent Hill 3 specifically, like that's when the, the um, halo of the sun came into play and you just kind of like walk and all of a sudden that symbols on the floor beneath you and that it's like later you find out like bits and pieces of it and how it's broken out and different things mean different things but it's just like that was like an environmental element that you just walk upon and it's so important to like backstory of the game and kind of extra bits and i thought that was really interesting as a whole the silent hill 3 textures and did uh did you did any either or any of you play um the uh, little big planet games yeah yeah i played them i just yeah. thought i just thought they had really outstanding textures like the little the little yeah. sock boys and they had like that sort of like fuzzy felt totally look. yeah but then no. there was also like cardboard and then on the cardboard you could put stickers and each of those things like felt like they should feel They're beautiful right yeah they they looked exactly how i'd expected them to look which is saying something yeah um and Honestly, the textures made that game. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, it it really gives you perspective. It like solidifies the perspective of scale of the world. Like you know that you're small yeah, and you're in space. right. It really like solidifies the experience that you're like a like a little thing. In a yeah, world. like and I, and I, I also think those hyper hyper realistic textures. Like that game was also a lot about like physics and interaction with objects. And I feel like the textures really made you like convinced you that those objects were real and interactable with, right? It's not like some matte background. It's something that's present in the game because of its texture. And I would, I would also argue that if the textures weren't as good as they were, that game would feel more 
just a game for children mm. instead of a game that I would play because it felt so real. I could I could feel myself in that world rather than kind of imagine it had to be, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think if you have to imagine you have to be, it's more of a kid game. And if if it feels right and feels honest, then it's it's something that adults can play and have just as much fun with. There was like, there's obviously a lot yeah. of care put into it. And that's like, that makes me just more yeah. invested in the game. Yeah. that's the same sure. thing with with um, mario too like the paper mario game is cute yes. as uh, oh god it's the cutest fucking it's thing i've ever played in my entire yeah. life <laughs> you have a little origami so companion funny. that follows you around and she's the most adorable little like companion to ever be in a thing yeah like she's just so cute you know go, that's it that's all I, it's so cute. I was i was gonna say the other games that tend to have really cool <laughs> textures are games uh that are like about their own environments in some way so like dishonored dishonored 2 those games have really beautiful textures and all of the right. items and yeah. all of the like w- mm. the parts of the world that are falling apart and, and games like prey too that game has some yep. really outstanding textures where it's like space age but also then like mutated or destroyed in some way one of the games that i put on my list when i was talking about textures i really liked was metal gear solid uh oh. metal gear solid 3 snake eater this is actually really interesting yeah go ahead because it's like it was during the ps2 era yeah. but like that game really pushed the limits of like the textures you could get out of a playstation 2 and like the flowers like the the ending battle like the in the lotus blossom or like in the uh in like the field of flowers yeah. is gorgeous uh all of the camo that you use because the whole game is basically like hey you have to change your camo depending on what environment you're in to like try and fit into it because the jungle background was so like so good that it you could actually kind of blend into stuff and people and you wouldn't be able to see yourself right and i think that was re- like it was really, really, really well done, especially in 2004. Yeah, and you're pushing, like, it's kind of impressive to have a game that's so focused on, like, trees and jungle and, like, undergrowth right. on a PS2 that normally, like, you know, the first Metal Gear Solid game, we're talking about, like, concrete, metal, uh, maybe some, like, some uh, fabrics here and there, but even Snake Suit in the in the first and second Metal Gear Solid games are very sort of like space age gray. shiny gray right yeah. yeah and now we have this game that's all about the jungle and dirt and and those two different things but also cardboard plays a very strong role in metal gear solid that's so true maybe that's it's the true. Line true. for all the texture stuff <laughs> i uh i i know i talked about my favorite but i kind of thought of a second one um so i'm really into 8-bit art i really think mm-hmm. there's something to be appreciated about it sure and i thought about um Oh, the yeah. first time I thought that um, the grass, the tall grass in Pokemon felt right, was an emerald. Interesting. I don't, I don't know if mm-hmm. anyone even remembers the variations. But well, before that, it felt like little bushes you were crawling through rather than yeah. actual tall grass. And um, in that game, it just it, it felt right. It looked right. The the 8-bit, the way they overlapped, because um, it was just a block of texture over mm. and over and over again. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel quite like yeah. it, that's what I was looking at. So, yeah, that was, I think, mm. the first on Game Boy Advance. Um, the first I get, time I, I felt get what you mean. the tall yeah. grass felt oh, right I see. Yeah. in Pokemon. They're kind of like their own, each one of was its own little individual tuft of tall grass. Uh, I don't know how to end this section. What do we do to get out of here? <laughs> Wait, I need to talk about one more thing. Okay, we're okay. going to talk about texture. Yeah. We have to talk about like where it's going in the future. So if oh. we're talking about texture, so textures are by I guess by definition is like there's a simulated surface, and this is a piece of artwork rendered at probably a high res and then scaled down versus on computing power to like on that surface. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you've seen the Unreal Engine Five. Yeah. Uh, demo. Mm-hmm. It's not even like textures are applied to a surface. It's like literally the simulated uh, matter is has so many polygonal um, surfaces and right. small it has... polygons that it's not even like an applied texture. It's just fully simulated like light yeah it has yeah. it has texture, literally which is in texture like it has like if you yeah, could feel like if you could texture. reach out and touch it, yeah. it would have a texture to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's if I mean. Bonkers. I mean, it's like 
like that's where texture's going just like and not like, not just texture so but also insane. when you talk about like ray tracing right they're essentially doing the same thing oh, but with yes. light where mm-hmm. instead of calculating it as like like, like you know, it's just there's mm. this is just brighter here. No, 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 no. Each of these individual photons is actually reflect, reflecting in this certain way of these certain textures. It's like yeah. literal, <laughs> real world reflections. Real is there rendering? Is there oh going to be an gosh. uncanny valley for like real world environments? <laughs> like, are we going to get so freaked out? Are we going to be like that guy in the mall who's on the roller coaster in <laughs> VR where he starts freaking out because he's like going down a thing and he's like, oh! <laughs> I can't see like because we think it's so real that it becomes unreal I, well, to us. Yeah, go ahead. I think that's a bigger discussion than what we would have today. <laughs> no, answer it in because, 10 seconds right now. Because to be honest, like that's a whole topic in and of itself about AI and where is it where it's going yeah. and games and where they're going and where the like line is about reality versus virtual reality so that's a whole nother episode we'll do i mean i'm not a murder yeah, robot so but... if you are excited about the uncanny valley you know where to find us on uh facebook on instagram on any of your podcast finders of choice uh or you can always join us in our own discussion uh in our off time so to speak at bit.ly slash disco brew which is our discourse we love people yeah join us. yeah come hang out yes join us um, special uh, special thanks this week to Compaticus, aka Dan, uh, Dan Paul for being Dan here. 2. Thanks, Dan. 2.0. Thanks for having me. Get it right, Dan yes, 2.0. Always a pleasure. And uh, <laughs> that's it for tonight. We're going to say goodnight, everybody. Good night, good, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Wow, that was bad. <laughs>